install the cookies, right? And so we get a cookie with request.cookie, and we set a cookie with hp.setCookie. Just to make this clear, uh, if we look at the, the example here, when you, oh, I'm stop the server, sorry. If I run the cookies. So if we look at the response headers, one of them is set cookie. Okay, you see that? So that, that value is what is setting the cookie, and then when we make the request, we send the cookie. So it's done through headers, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's not something in addition to headers, it's just a special kind of header that the browser knows to remember. Um, that's how we use cookies. Uh, so cookies are used to store information, it's to, to store state, because HTTP is stateless. So that's how we can get state back into the system here. Um, we sometimes use cookies directly like this, but usually we're not so interested in a cookie as much as a session. So the idea of a session is when a user logs in, uh, until they click log out, that's their session. Their session. So it's a, uh, over time, they're accessing multiple pages on our site. And we want to keep track of them. We want to know that they're logged in for each one of those requests. Uh, and so we use a session to do that. So how can we make a session? Uh, well, we can store it in a cookie. So um, I could, for example, um, the first time somebody comes in here, say, if error is not nil. So if that happens, cookie is not set. Um, so we come in here and the cookie is not set. Then we can set it, right? And so what I'm going to do is set it to a UUID. Uh, so we'll call this session ID. So we can make a UUID <coughs> using a UUID package. So let's go find one of those. Uh, UUID is a universally unique identifier. And so here's a package which can make UUIDs. If we go to the docs for that, we can see how to use it. So we do go get and get the, this guy. Oh, let's use a different package. That one requires Mercurial. Um, so we'll use this one instead. Because probably nobody installed Mercurial. Okay, so go get and do this one instead. Um, and it does, there's all these versions of UUIDs. Uh, and, they'll, and they'll talk about what they are. We want V4. V4 is a random have an example. Um, it returns this UUID, which is 16 bytes. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's do that. So I'm going to generate an ID. I'm just going to ignore the error because that pretty much can't happen. And say new v4. So I have an ID. And I'm going to use that as my session ID. I'm going to turn it to a string because I think it has a string method. That's the dot string. Um, I guess I'm not actually using the cookie. Well, we're going to use it, so I'm just going to print line it for now. We'll use it later. Uh, so, in fact, let's tell me again why you did an assertion versus a cast on 19. Sorry, that is a method call to so a method call. That's great. String parentheses. The assertion would be as if the string was all in parentheses. That's right. So let's save this cookie into cookie. And then set it. Because we're going to use cookie later. Um, but I just wanted to save it. So we create a new ID. We set the value of the cookie session ID to that value. And then we, so we need to change this too. The first time you come in, we create a new one. 
The second time you come in, it should stay the same. Okay? So this ID, we've now created a session with it because the first time it's new, every subsequent time it's the same ID we saw before. So the session ID is sticking around for the lifetime of the cookie. Can you copy that to scratch, please? Just so I can cap capture the steps. Thank you. You can replace that. You're going to have to do something about that. Because everybody on the internet just saw it. About what? <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> it's only good for a year, so. Um. Okay, so we got our cookies. We sent in my cookie. I'm not using that anymore, so that's just going to sit around. But now, see this session ID? You've probably seen something that looks like that before. That's a UUID, okay? Universally unique identifier. That means no matter how many you generate, no matter how many people on the planet are generating them, you'll never get a repeated one. That's the whole point of a unique, universally unique identifier. That's just because the possible combinations are so vast yes. that the probability of two of the same one coming out is right. infinitesimal. There's far more universally unique IDs than there are atoms in the universe, for example. So. Oh my god. That's a lot of IDs. So you're not going to make a, it's not going to come up again. That's the point. Um, and that's why you, you use it, because it means I don't have to have like a database or something of IDs. I can just make one up, and I know I don't, it won't be repeated anywhere. Um, so now we have our ID. And so it started, uh, you know, B and then B62, and then it ends with A01. So if I refresh, I should see the same ID here. Wait, that was the session ID right there, or the UUID? UUID is session ID. Okay. Uh, and so it stays the same. Now, if I get rid of this cookie, oh, I guess you have to do it over here. If I get rid of the cookie, then I'm going to get a new session ID. See, it changed. So, I, I essentially, by doing that, it's as if I clicked log out on my website by deleting the cookie. Um, okay, so now we have a session ID. We could store not just the session ID, but other things too, like uh, the kinds of things we, we often store in session, uh, maybe the user's information, so we're going to store their email, right? Uh, so instead of the ID, we, we might be able to store um, their email, right? And so I could somehow get the user information and put it in here. So we could say, you know, plus space and then their e email or, or whatever. We could store any deep data we want in it. We could store it as JSON. Um, we could store it as just strings or whatever. Everybody following? Uh, so like storing email, you'd be storing it in the cookie there, and the name of the cookie session ID, and then it's got the UUID value, and then inside the value there, yeah, you can store anything, right? Like just a string, and the string is limited by however much you can put in a cookie, which is four kilobytes, five kilobytes? I don't know. Um, so I guess I'll show how to do that. So I'm going to make a form where the user can uh, enter their email. And then we're going to save it in the cookie. Okay. Um, so instead of storing the ID, we will store the email. So 
So what I'm going to do is move this down here. So we're always going to save the cookie. And then I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to say cookie.value equal that. I don't want to this anymore, so I'll comment it out. Um, so what I did is if you pass in the email, it will change the cookie's value in the email. And then down here, we will just always print, you know, the email from the cookie. So we'll say the cookie dot value. Oh, I made it an email. So now I've set it to test.example.com. If I come there just fresh, it is always saving it. Where is it getting this data from? It's getting it from the cookie. Okay, so it's saved in my session. That means if I close this window and open a new one, what happens? Cookie, you see your email. That's right. Cookie survives. So we can use it to store data. I could store all kinds of data. And that means for other pages, I go to another page, I can just get it out of the cookie here, uh, the email address, right? So it's kind of like a database that way. It's a database stored on the user's computer that's passed with every request. And like you're saying, there's a limited size, um, but we can do that. Uh, and so that's the way we can implement session, because now if I needed to know the user's email address all across my site, I can get it from the cookie, okay? Everybody following? Yeah, can you copy that over too, please? So what's the downside of doing that? You're passing uh, all the data every time. So if you don't need it, that's hit impacting your performance a little bit. Let me show you uh, show you this way. Or not. No, I mean it's a, it can be a lot if you have a lot of data. I want to show you a different problem that's more more of a major issue with this approach. Um, they just have to put in your email to themselves and then they have your yeah. In other words, the data in the cookie, the user can change it. So if we're using this to say, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so, their account, and they would, you know, you go to Amazon and you buy a pair of shoes or something, you just go, go to the cookie, change the email to something else, and now you're buying it from somebody else's account, right? And they pay for it. Like, that's not acceptable, uh, and you could do that, right, by just changing the cookie. So that's a downside of a cookie. We can't trust it, because it can change, right? We can't. We can't guarantee that the user won't mess with it. Um, so I, you know, test at example.com and then there's a password here, uh, whatever. You know, and then we save it and this is as if we say from now on, oh, it's this test at example.com's username, right? And what I'm saying is you can go in your browser, change the cookie, resubmit the page, and now you'll have a different email, okay? Um, and so we can't trust a cookie. It's just like a query string variable or a form input. We can't trust its content the user can change it. So that's so that makes it seem like we, we can't use it as a session FD, right? Because people can change it. So they could take somebody else's session. And that, that could be a major problem, right? Uh, so how do we fix that? OK. We have two ways of fixing that. To prevent somebody from tampering with the cookie, we can add something called an HMAP. So, and that's called a hash based message uh, authentication code. Oops. Uh, so it's a hash, hash based message authentication code. And we can use that to prevent tampering with our cookie. So how do we do that? Well, this is where uh, Go tends to shine. It has a fantastic crypto library. Uh, and so in here, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, but we're going to use this guy. So let me do a search for HMAC, just so we can see if there's a uh, 
crypto slash HMAC. And it implements the you know, hash based method, message authentication. And so the way you, you do that is you give it the hash function and the key, and it gives you this other hash. You compute it, and then uh, you can save that with the message. So, um, so uh, data will be a string, and we'll return a string. So I'm just making a function that will do what we want. So I'll say hmac.new. It takes the, a function that returns a hash. So what's a function that returns a hash? <coughs> uh, the SHA-256 is one. So let me look that up. Crypto slash SHA-256. That's a function that returns a hash. Right. So I give it SHA-256.new. Don't call new, give it the function new, and it will create an HMAC with that algorithm. And then I give it the key. Uh, so what's the key? Uh, it has to match the key you'd give over here. Um, so here's an example. I'm not sure the size of the key. Um, I bet there's a test in here. We can look at that. So this is often a good place to find examples. Uh, and so here's a key, I think. HMAC test is the second thing is the key. So the, the second thing here is the key. Um, you can see they have some hard-coded things. So the key, I guess, can be anything, really. Um, so we'll just make up a key. Our key. Okay. That would be something secret that you wouldn't share with anybody. It would be on your server, but not to your any of your clients. Okay. It's a secret. <laughs> um, and so we create our HMAC, uh, and then we can call it by doing this. This we've done before. Um, dot write. So we do actually use IO write string h data and then h dot sum. Remember uh, format dot s print uh, f percent, I think it was x, wasn't that it? And that returned uh, the hex of the uh, and that would give us a code. So let me see if that worked just down here. Um, what well, we should do it after we set the get code of cookie dot value, and that's going to give us. We'll see a number. One of these hashes is what it's going to give us. Yeah. So that gives us this big huge hash, and what we would do is we would stuff that hash um, inside of our. Say you know like cookie dot value equals code plus and then the pipe character or something to delineate it from the rest of the value of the cookie. Uh, I'm not going to write the rest of this, but basically what you would do is you would on the next time through you'd grab you'd like split on the pipe get the value, recompute the code, and then compare it to the first part. If they match, that means the code has not been changed. Okay, and the H map is such that you're guaranteed it has not been changed. If they change one character of the value, you will get a different code. And because of the cryptographic properties of an HMAC, they can't take the code to figure out how to make it. Okay. And so you can use an HMAC to protect the string. Mm -hmm. Now, the other downside of this, so, so that, that prevents tampering. It means you can't change the cookie without also having to change the code, and they can't predict how to make the code. So, because they don't have the secret key. They need the password to do that. Um, the other issue is that sometimes you store information in a cookie that you don't want your user to be able to read. Okay? So you, you might put data in there that you don't want users to know. And then you can use encryption. Okay? And then you can encrypt the whole cookie, store it inside there. They see a bunch of garbage data. They have no idea what it means. Uh, and then you can decrypt it back out. Okay? Every 
we fall into two ideas here? Preventing tampering and encrypting the data. Uh, so like I said, I don't want to keep doing this because it gets out of hand quickly. Uh, and the point is you, you don't have to. There are libraries that do this for you. Um, you copy that up too, just general reference. Thank you. And one of those is Gorilla Session. So, so Gorilla Session, which is a library, the Gorilla Toolkit has some nice libraries for Go. Um, and so it uses secure cookie. And secure cookies can't be forged because they're validated using an HMAC. And they can also optionally be encrypted. And then users can't read them. Okay, so they both can't tamper with them and they both can't read them. So it does exactly what we want. Um, and so the idea here is you give it two passwords. The first password is for the HMAC. And the second password is for the encryption. And so you can just not use the second one and it won't encrypt. Um, in our case, we wouldn't need to encrypt it because the user knows his email, so we don't care if they see that. Uh, but maybe there was data you want stuck in there. Um, and then it can do the secure cookie bit here. So you give it, um, you call S encode, and, and it would give you back the encoded data that you'd save to the cookie, and then you can call decode to read it back out. Um, so this is secure cookie. Uh, it's just a library for writing secure cookies, okay? And then using that, we can create a session. And so we're gonna use the session package they have available. Uh, maybe it's gonna call session. Sessions, plural. Um, so if we run this, go get that guy. GitHub.com slash gorilla slash sessions. Kind of funny they managed to get the gorilla name. Um, so it lists a bunch of the features and stuff, and then they have some usage. So let's try this. So we're going to make a store. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this bit of code. So this is a session store, and basically it's going to have our password. And so it's doing the same thing I was doing before, it's just doing it for us. So this is the password you would not share with your users. Uh, so you can put it in your source code because your users can't see your source code. Uh, but yeah, so secret password. Uh, you can generate passwords. There's sites online that will do that for you. Uh, in Go, you can do that as well. There's a crypto rand that can generate a secure password. But just generate a range of a bunch of bytes, hexadecimalize them, and that's a good password. Don't come up with a password in your head. That's not a good password. <laughs> you want a random password, uh, particularly for something like this, because it's not something you need to remember. It's something that uh, the computer needs to know and none of your users know, but it doesn't have necessarily have to be you know, a word because you're not going to enter it. It's in your code. Um, so we, we have our store, and then the way this works is we call store.git, give it the request and the name of the session and it gives us back a session. And it's a math-like object, so it has a session about values, and you can set things on it and get things from it, and then you save it at the end. So let's try that. Um, so rather than do all this, what we're going to do is session get. Give it the request, and give it a name, uh, we'll just call it session. And then we call this values, so we can like set values on it. So we can say if the email form value um, email was sent in, you know, normally you would like check password or whatever, but here we're gonna just set it. Um, email equal, uh, rec.form value email. So we're saving it into the session, and then we're going to save it. So we say session.save, and I think it's rec res, so it's like the opposite of normal. And that will save our session. So now we're. Why did they do that opposite? I'm not sure. Values. Valid operation. Is 
that a real error? Oh, that is a real error. Base64 encoded blob of data. You see that? This, this MT, all that stuff. Um, so that's how it's saved. It. Now, part of this will be that HMAC code, and then the rest of it will be data. And uh, but so it makes it. Do, it does all that for us. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, and now we can store whatever we want in the session. Uh, you know, we can just add to session values, and we can retrieve it like that. So. Uh, this is a good way to do sessions. I, there are other session libraries out there, but I think this one is perfectly adequate. Um, uh, it's a good, good general purpose library. So the, the nice thing about that Gorilla Toolkit is that you don't, it's not like you're, you're getting an entire framework, okay? You're just getting one small piece. Uh, I don't have to like have special Gorilla methods and stuff. I'm just using just the session store. And so I just get it. Pretty straightforward. Copy that please. And uh, so there are different uh, sort of philosophies about how to handle session. Um, so in this one, I'm storing email, right? And so uh, things you might store in there might be the user ID. So you might have uh, session.values user ID equal, and you set it to the user ID. And then the next time they come to the next page, you pull out the user ID. If they have a user ID, you know they're logged in, okay? And you know that they are not like uh, hacking somebody else's account because you have the HMAC codes, so you know you can't tamper with that user ID. If they tried to change it, it would, it would not give you back that user ID. So we can trust the data inside of the session, is what I'm getting at. And so we can say, if there's a user ID, that means I put it there, right? So I put it in there when they logged in, and then for subsequent pages, when I pull back out, it's like, oh, I know you're logged in. And so we would use that for later database queries. We'd say, we'd have like a table or something, and we'd say, where the user ID is such and such. Uh, and we would use that to know they're logged in. Um, so, like I said, there's different philosophies. That would be like the minimal one, right? Where I just store just the user ID. Other ones would say we store more information, essentially. Okay. Uh, but so you can store as much or as little as you want. So one idea would be just store a number. And then use something like Redis. And the, the number would be the key. And then the value would be the real session. Okay. So then every single request is going to look like, get that number, go look it up in Redis. And there, there's your session. You get all the session information out of Redis. Okay. So different, different approaches. I like using the cookie because it's there. And if you're not saving too much data, it doesn't take up too much space. Um, so why, make, why have to add, add capacity to my system if I can leverage the user's computer. Okay, that's the thinking. Um, because I don't have to have a Reddit server just for sessions. I can just use cookies to do that. So, any questions about that? The basic idea here? How uh, are we uh, first just looking at cookies and then later we'll look at using web storage in lieu of cookies? Because I know that web storage and local storage and session storage or something like that, right? I'm, uh, I'm not going to show any web storage. I mean, unless we want to, but that's not very Go specific. Oh, okay, okay. but but you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe we're referring to separate things. But in the browser under Dev Tools, you can go in there and you can either see the cookie or you can see local storage, session storage. Yeah, yeah. So you can use that. If you do, that means you have to pass it on all your requests because it isn't going to get passed for you. Okay. Right? Because cookies do, but local storage is local. So you'd have to add to every URL question mark session ID equal and put the session ID, okay. uh, which you could do with JavaScript. But um, and you've probably seen that on sites where they do that because they can't use cookies because they're in Europe or whatever. Um, but it's the same basic idea. We're just getting a session ID, then looking up the session in the database and using that. Any questions about the sessions? Uh, so two, two uh, 
Example problems here, create an HTTP application that tracks how many times a user accesses your web page with a cookie. So you can use session or you can use the cookie manually, either way. Uh, but the basic idea is the first time they come to the page, it should be zero and then or one. And the next time, two and three and four and five and so on. So every time they come, increment the counter in the cookie. Right? Everybody follow what that's gonna look like? That shouldn't be too hard. And then the second one is create an HTTP application that supports at least two endpoints, log in, log out. Log in should accept a form and save a cookie. Log out should clear the cookie. Any questions? 